Hello, so today I'm going to be describing how I kind of brute forced my way into creating ordered groups. So a project I'm working on required me to create groups um, in of a continuous variable, um, but the groups needed to be at least a certain sample size. So of a minimum remember how to spell minimum sample size and so I was scour, scour, scour yeah, searching online um, to try to find a way to do this and I found a lot of ways of sampling within groups a lot of ways of creating um, groups that have a certain sample size but kind of doing it by sampling with replacement within groups and that's wasn't really what I needed. Um, and so I was kind of eventually found the way of doing it based on using a something called an empirical uh, cumulative distribution, a E, C, D, F. Um, so an empirical, empirical cumulative distribution function um, really just takes your X variable, it has some values, in this case it's a continuous variable, and what it does is on the y-axis it's the um, basically the proportion of x that is greater than or equal to some value. Just call it x0. Um, and it of course just ranges from 0 to 1. And so these graphs they end up looking something like that, um, where you kind of have a small proportion that are less than or equal to some value um, x naught, but then as you increase in value of x, you of course encompass more of the probability distribution until you get to the whole um, distribution, it's the cumulative distribution function part of it. Um, but in my case, we wanted to do this empirically, not based on some theoretical function like x distributed normally. But here we're just saying, hey, we have x has some values like 0 0.3, 1, 2, 1, 6, dot, dot, dot. Um, it just has some values based on our data set. And so what we're going to do is we're going to order, basically reorder all the values in x um, and then create the empirical cumulative distribution function by then looking at the quantiles of the ordering of that vector. And so to do this, um, I kind of just brute force my way looking uh, through R um, until I eventually found uh, how to do this um, in R in a really simple way, which is nice. Um, so what it does is it will basically just sort this vector from smallest to largest. And then we can look at the proportion of values um, within a given range to create groups of that. And so this is what um, it ends up uh, looking like. And so let me go into our studio here. Um, I'm going to um, actually use the a certain R package to do this, um, just so I can get uh, data um, that I know has the form that I want. Um, and so in this case, I am doing something within uh, to look at how the cumulative uh, distribution function relates to uh, item scores um, on an assessment. So I'm just going to use uh, data from that. So um, a good data set is just the just load it into my environment. There we go. And that's what it looks like. It's just th for 
it's just a small little data set with a couple items. Um, and then kind of looking by group, you can kind of get an idea of the distribution of the responses because there's only three categories um, that we're looking at. And so what the other function is going to get the tidyverse. Um, the other thing I'm looking at is how does the kind of like what is the empirical functioning of items? And so we're looking at um, creating plots like I'll, I'll show you here um, what we're looking at. And so right now I'm just going to reshape the data. Um, so that it is in long format. Um, this isn't necessary, but it was one of the uh, ways the data that I was working on previously had it set up. So I'll just set it up like that um, to show how I went from a data set um, to um, kind of something manageable for me. Um, and so what Nope, oh, forgot to add an ID. And so we want everything but the ID to go to names of items. So what we're going to do is we're going to group by ID. And then I'm going to create what is called a rest score, which is the sum of x minus x. Um, for me, I like doing them relative. Um, just so, you know, we're just going to do the regular rest score. So that the regular rest score, I'm going to call this plot data. And so this is the kind of plots that I and using for my other projects. Where we are looking at the um, conditional um, item means based on the rest scores. And so we have the X mean, that is the mean of X at each rest score for each item. So you got X rest score, you got X mean. Oh, GG plot is that, so you got genome point plus facet by item. So let's see, does that get me what I want? just about. Um, and so what you'll notice is that for each of these items, uh, what we get is the rest score. So the basically the sum of item responses on the other items um, based on the mean of the item response. And so um, to check the function of items, this is called an empirical item response function. Um, and so it lets us see how the, the item response uh, dictates based on an empirical estimate of their total score or theta score. And I don't like that. This is just me being picky. I just think that's prettier. Is it? Eh, probably not, but I like it. Um, then the last thing is the smooth line between them. Yeah, there we go. 
and so what we're looking to see, yeah, let's, let's do that. Yeah, that looks prettier. I like that. Um, one of the big things we are looking at um, in these plots is to see if it is continuously going up. And so you'll notice that for item three, it definitely dips down. And one of the questions that the people I work with have is whether that is a um, significant um, drop or not. And so one of the issues is whether we have enough observations for each of these rest scores to estimate these conditional item means um, with any amount of fidelity. And so one of the ways we can look at that is just to get a, a sense of how many people we have. So just the what was that size. And so one of the ways we can do that is to add text in there. is to add the sample size. And so we'll see that even though that um, some of these actually seem to be pretty well, um, like 79, that's pretty good um, to have that many. So it might actually be not functioning properly. Um, that means like that something about item three might not be working the way uh, we would want. Um, however, what I was working with um, had a lot of cases like this where you only have like five responses or like very few, like one or two over here or less than 10. Um, so whenever we start to have a very low number of observations per uh, conditional item mean, we have a lot of uncertainty about what that value is, um, leading us to not be able to es estimate this empirical line very well. And so what uh, I was looking at the empirical cumulative distribution function for is to be able to create groups of these rest scores in order to have uh, groups that have a sufficient sample size um, that I needed. So to do that, I'm just going to take my data up here, my plot data. And so all I need to do is create a um, new new variable. I'm going to call it rest group. And I'm going to cut that variable of rest. I'm going to cut it based on the quantiles of the empirical cumulative distribution function. And so um, just to step back a second, um, for the items, um, we, in R, there is a function called the empirical cumulative distribution function, um, which is very handy um, in order to, to do this. And so here is what that looks like. For the risk scores. And so what you'll notice is that what the empirical cumulative distribution function is, it has our X scores and it has the probability of that score. So you have values from zero um, to about one, one to two, two to three, four, and you get this kind of step up. So hence the empirical side, because there's these um, kind of jumps in the, in the empirical plot. So what, what we want to do is we want to take the quantiles of this that each have um, steps of say five to 10 or like 25% of our total sample size so that we can create because our total sample size again was 300. And so what we would like is to maybe create um, each of the, each group, each rest group um, to have maybe say, uh, if we want to create 10 groups, they would each have 30. But in this case, um, let's just do um, four so that each of them have a pretty large um, size of sample size of 75.
So we're going to take this cumulative distribution function and cut it up into four chunks. So what we do is we look at the quantiles of the empirical cumulative distribution function of the rest scores. And the quantiles are 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and 1. One thing to make sure to include in the cut is include, let's see, where's the cut? There it is. Include dot. Include lowest, that's it. And so what this does that didn't work. Quantiles cannot find quantile. are not unique. Let's see, will this work? Yeah, that's stupid. Uh, sometimes I hate R. Um, but it lets us do what we need. And so now instead of using rest, we'll use the rest group. In, which has the um, mean of x. If I can't then we got g plot. stuff. Here we go. That did not work at all. Ah.
there we go, finally. Okay, so what you'll notice here is that the first group um, ended up grabbing a lot of uh, people because we used the entire uh, distribution and we still got, we're left with groups that were relatively small. Um, this would probably, this tends to work better in my opinion when we have a larger number of rest scores instead of from zero to six, we've got like zero to 30 or zero to 50. Um, and so that creates a little bit of an issue, but not much. But anyways, what you'll notice here is that these groups have definitely smoothed. Let's see. There you go, smoothed out to where we don't have the um, dips. Um, now that is one fun one of the issues with kind of zooming out is we don't get as granular of information as this plot. Um, where we do see a dip down at the lower end for item three, as opposed to when we kind of aggregate up. because there's just so much more uncertainty in this plot, especially for this lower score and for these relative to um, the new scores in item two. Um, and so that is kind of the way to do it is you kind of take the score that you're interested in cutting up, you use the quantile CDF of that score, and then what are the quantiles that you're interested in cutting up to? Um, so if you want, uh, two groups, you'll put three scores, the lower, middle, and upper cuts. Um, and if you want um, uh, more groups, like say four, you'll add um, the four highest, the low, lower bound uh, up to the score that you're interested in. That creates the groups. So that's one way to create a rest score group so that whenever you start to look at the conditional item means, you have a larger sample size per group um, without having to uh, artificially inflate sample size in some way. That creates your groups per uh, from a continuous variable in a way that is useful uh, for some other types of analyses. Thank you, uh, and let me know if you have any questions.